All right. I think we're live. This is uh, happening on Wednesday, September 29th, 2021. And uh, today, well, we're going to we're going to dig into a little keyword hack that uh, you can absolutely use if you have a brand new site, if you have a older site, uh, or if you just want to find some new keywords. Uh, what I'm really focusing on here, though, is for anyone that has a newer site. And the reason why is because I shared a, uh, a recent uh, little keyword strategy that we're using, uh, which is working really, really well. And uh, what you need, though, is you need a website that has some authority. Uh, and then you're going to analyze other sites that have a little bit less authority, and then you're going to see what they're ranking for, and then you're going to go after those keywords. Like that's it in a nutshell. But you need to have a uh, you know a site that already has some authority, um, which when you're starting out you don't. And uh, whenever we're starting brand new sites, not on an expired domain, but just a brand new site, we don't have any authority, so we have to be able to. Uh, create our authority. And the way that you do that is you start publishing content. Um, and I'm actually going to be using this exact strategy for a, uh, a new site. Uh, and this is another one on top of the, the last one that I announced. Uh, this will be our sixth. Um, and this one here will be a little bit of a different uh, test because I'm going to use this strategy right here. And I'm going to publish uh, shorter articles, about a thousand words. And we're going to go after some low hanging keywords using the strategy that I'm going to share with you here today. So before we get rocking and rolling, I do want to make sure that I am broadcasting here live. And uh, the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to ask you if you are here live, let me know that you can hear and see me. Um, I see some of you coming on, but I do not see any comments as of right now. And then what I will do once I do get the okay I will go ahead and uh, start sharing my screen because I'm going to actually walk you through this process. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys can hear and see me. Make sure I'm not just talking to myself here and then we will officially kick this thing off. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to share this with you guys because I know that a lot of times we get stuck in trying to figure out is there... Is there a keyword that I should be going after? What kind of traffic should I look for? Uh, you know, is this the right one to go after? What's the competition like? Um, Dina, thank you for letting me know. Okay, cool. So I guess that uh, we're good to go. All right, now I am going to be showing you uh, how to do this manually, but then I'm going to show you a tool that is a credit-based tool. You don't have to sign up for a subscription or anything like that, but you can use credits and it will help you speed this process up. So I will be sharing that as well. The other thing I'm going to do is uh, for someone that is here live, I will ask that you um, drop in the comments if there is a keyword or even a topic, if, if, you, want, if you want to talk about bass fishing, if you want to talk about playing guitar, whatever it is, I will do one of these keyword research, uh, these little uh, discovery uh, sessions. I'll use one of them for your uh, keyword, your seed keyword, and then I will be able to show you how this uh, works, and then uh, you'll be able to get you know, the keywords if you want to, to use them. So I'm going to do that as well, walking through how to actually do this on the fly. All right, but I'm going to show you some examples on how to do this manually. Then I'm going to show you how we can speed up this process using a tool. And, um, and from there, just knowing what to look for. I think the big thing here is to know what to look for. And when you know what to look for, then you can be more confident. The one thing I do want to say, though, is do not be fooled by zero search traffic. And what I mean by that is you may do a search in Uber suggest or uh, any of the other tools out there. And you may say, well, it gets zero searches. Don't let that fool you because that's just one keyword or one phrase. And a lot of times you can get picked up for multiple phrases. It's happened to us. I never look at that as a negative unless it doesn't make sense. If the keyword makes sense, I'm going to go ahead and create it. If it doesn't make sense, no, we'll skip it. 
um, for sure. And I'll show you some examples of what that looks like here as well. All right. So today we're going to kick this thing off. We're going to do a little bit of uh, keyword research, but I'm going to be showing you a new hack that, uh, well, it's kind of been out there for a long time. And I say out there, people have been looking at these, at these weaker sites to say that they have a chance to rank a new site by looking and identifying these weaker sites. So it's kind of been out there. Um, not a lot of people really use it as far as I know. And uh, to be able to have a tool that can actually speed this up really, really makes it nice. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and get this baby kicked off and uh, we'll get rocking and rolling. You guys know that have been here before. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick pause and then we're going to go ahead and kick this off because this will be a recording that we'll use later inside of the podcast and also on YouTube. So here we go. All right, guys, welcome back today. I am fired up because I'm going to share with you a three-step keyword hack for finding these keywords that we can rank on a brand new site. That's one of the biggest obstacles I see people uh, running across when they are starting from scratch is what are the best keywords? How do I know I have the, the best chance of ranking? Well, first off, I've talked about this here on the podcast. I've talked about this on my coffee talks uh, and I've shared it several times. Uh, inside of our niche properties class, I actually show you looking over my shoulder on how to find these in Uber suggest, and it works. It totally works, but we can take it one level deeper. And that's what I'm going to share with you here today. If you're starting from scratch and you just want to use Uber suggest, find low competition keywords there, look at the ones that are 35 or less. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, basically there's a filter in there. It'll give you a competitive score. The problem with that is not really a problem, but the thing that sometimes you don't realize is even though that score is low, there might be competition there that you're not ever going to outrank. But if we look a little bit deeper, if we pull back the curtain a little bit, we're able to maybe identify some weaker sites that would clearly say, you know what? We can outrank them. The other thing is these sites technically have a very high domain authority, which you would say, well, it's going to be hard to rank for. Uber suggests looks at that as a score of a high domain authority. But in reality, these sites can actually be outranked from newer sites that are more on target with the keyword. So that's really what we're going to be doing here is identifying these sites that have high domain authorities, but they're actually only ranking there because. Google is trying to fill that spot and that is the closest that it can, that it can come up with. If we design our content to answer that question, uh, with the, with the exact phrase of what is actually being keyed in, well, there's a better chance of us ranking. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. Now you can do this manually. Okay. You can do it manually. There's also a tool that I'm going to be sharing with you that makes this process even easier. Now, you don't have to pay for a tool if you don't want to. You can do this manually. I'll show you exactly what to do and what to look for. But uh, once you understand that this can speed up the process, you might want to invest in this tool. Now, this tool, by the way, and I'll give away the tool here in a second. I actually just interviewed um, the uh, the creator of this tool. He'll, he'll be coming on. I'm not going to give it away yet. Um, he'll be coming on the podcast and talking all about it. But it's a tool that uh, requires credits. So if you want to do a certain number of keyword searches, you have to just buy credits. So it's pretty cool. If you want to just use it for one run of some keywords, you can. If you want to keep using it every single month, you can. doesn't matter. Um, it's a pretty sweet uh, tool and it works really well. And you'll see why here in a minute. All right. So what I'm going to do here, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I'm going to be sharing my screen. So you probably want to go to the show notes page of this, which will just be the episode of this uh, podcast. So brandcreators.com forward slash episode. So whatever the episode is, go to that episode and then you will be able to watch this um, because we're going to embed this on the show notes over at brandcreators.com. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to share my screen and then I will be walking you guys through those. So if you guys are listening, don't worry, I'll give you guys the play by play as best I can. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to the stream here. Um, so now what we're looking at, let me just go ahead and get my screen 
set up here. And if you guys have any questions and you are here live or watching the replay, drop them in the comments. And if there's a keyword or a, well, let's say a, uh, a seed keyword, bass fishing, guitar playing, whatever. Um, and you want me to do a, uh, a keyword research session. I'm going to actually do that here at the end of this, uh, of this podcast and of this live. So if you're here live, drop that in there after I get done showing with you guys, like how to do this, um, I will be doing one live so you can actually see it live right in front of you using this tool. All right. So let's just kind of kick it off. I'm going to kick it off again, using the bass fishing niche, because I think this is a great example. So Here's what you're going to do, okay? And I'm not going to make this thing all fancy and like uh, you got to do all of these things in order to make this thing work. I'm going to get right to it, okay, of what we want to do. The first thing is we are going to need a keyword, right? So if you are not sure what keywords to, to go after, well, you got to kind of get that list together. You can just type in, I've shared this with you guys before, go into Google and just put in bass fishing and see what comes up. Bass fishing and it'll it'll populate at night or um, or can you catch bass, fill in the blanks, right? And that's a lot of times a good way to start. Um, now, if you're using tools, a lot of times they'll give you suggestions and then you can drill down even deeper. But I'm just going to start with a keyword that I found by doing some basic research. So why is bass fishing so popular? So that's a, a uh, keyword, a long tail keyword that people are searching and there is content now created for that. So as I type that in, I'm going to see there's some images at the very top. This is another reason, by the way, a little side note here. This is another reason why you want to have images embedded and put on your post, on your article, because if you keyword load them as we teach inside of the niche properties class, and I've taught it here on the podcast, is you want to have those images saved and renamed your keywords. So if it's a largemouth bass, um, in a pond, title that image that. If it's a uh, woman holding bass fish, and that's what I'm looking at right here at the very top, title the image of that, okay? And then that way there, you can come up in the Google image search. So right at the very top here, we're seeing that there's a, um, a website that is, uh, I think it's, uh, let's see, uh, iOutdoor.com is what it's called. And the very first post is theirs. And it says, why is bass fishing so popular? So they answered the question and they're showing up in the first result. They even get the little snippet there. And then you see people also ask, what is so special about bass fishing? Why are people so obsessed with bass fishing? Why do people catch large mouth bass? Why bass fishing is a sport. Okay. So those are some ideas again. And I've went through that for some keyword research, but what I'm really trying to look for here is, is this keyword one that I could rank for on a newer site? Okay. So let's kind of scroll down a little bit and I'm going to show you what I'm looking for. So the next one is five reasons why bass fishing is so popular among anglers. Um, and that one is freshwaterfishingadvice.com. The next one is my backyard life, seven reasons why bass fishing is so popular. So that one there answers the question exactly. The next one is, is slow fishing, um, dot S I, I think that's what it is. Let's see here. Yeah. Whatever that extension is. Um, 10 reasons why, why is bass fishing so popular explained fishing anywhere. That's another one. Now, this is where we say, because I'm, I've come to this little part here. And if you guys can't see it, I'm circling, circling it. And it is a Reddit post. Okay. Now Reddit has been around for years. Reddit is basically user generated content. It's basically a forum of, you know, of some kind. Okay. So Whenever we see this, this is a good sign that we could probably create a piece of content that answers this question exactly and gives it more context. Okay. So when you see a Reddit, so this is okay. Tip number one here on what to look for. If you see a Reddit post, there's a good chance you can outrank them. Okay. Even though if you look at Reddit, it's probably like a 90 domain authority. Now, this isn't always the case but it's a really, really good sign. So that's the first thing I'm looking for. Is there something like a user generated piece of content? This could be Reddit. This could be a forum. And I'll show you an example here in a second of what else to look for. So it's not just Reddit. It could be a uh, Facebook post. 
It could be an, on a page. It could be uh, Pinterest. Now, if there's all the SERPs, are, all the search engines are um, dominated by Pinterest, that would probably be a sign to stay away from that. But if there's one, maybe two, then there's a good chance you could probably outrank them depending on the content. All right. So if I go down a little bit further, there's another one that I look for, and that's Quora. Okay. And this one here says, why is bass fishing so fun? But Quora again is one of those sites that is more of a forum type style, right? It's where you are having people ask questions and then there are answers. Okay. And what's happening is Google is picking up the answers and then indexing them. Okay. With some very, very little, uh, content. Okay, in context. And I'm going to show you in a second how we can look at word count and see why that we can probably create content with, I don't know, a thousand or 1500 words and outrank them with a very uh, simple, short piece of content. Okay. So that's the very first thing. Okay. And that's really the strategy here. Okay. How do we find these long tail keywords that have forum generated? Uh, posts, uh, user generated posts, Reddit, Quora, answers.net or com or whatever it is. Um, any of those that are user generated, that's a really, really good sign. And if we can find that there's more than just one, that's even better. So in this case, on this one here, why is bass fishing so popular? Um, this one here had a Reddit post and it had a Quora post. So that's a good sign. Okay. That's a really, really good sign. Now also understand this. If we rank for why is bass fishing so popular, we're probably going to rank for some of these other ones. Why is, why is, uh, is it so special about, or what is so special about bass fishing? Why are people so obsessed with bass fishing? You can still rank for that because most likely you're going to create your piece of content that will answer those other questions inside of there. That's also what we talk about inside the niche properties class, uh, is how to create that content to use these frequently asked questions or people also asked that way there, we can get picked up for several other long tail keywords, right? But this is a good way to see the weaknesses in page one, which we ultimately want to end up. So let me give you another example. Here's another one. Is bass fishing a sport? Now, again, this is a very general question, but people are asking this question. Okay. I, I've done the research. So now if I look down a little bit further, we have, uh, people also ask is fishing a sport or not is bass fishing an NCAA sport. How long has bass fishing been a sport? Again, those would be great subtopics for our content, but now let's look down very, uh, the very first post below that is Quora is bass fishing a sport five answers. Okay. And let's see Wikipedia. Wikipedia is another one that we could probably outrank as much as you would look at that as like a huge authoritative site. It is, but it's, it's not fully uh, a piece of content that is necessarily going to answer that question. Like the title of that Wikipedia is just bass fishing. That's it. And they must've talked about it inside of there, but bass fishing, that's the other thing that I want to stress here. The other thing that I'm looking at is the title of the post or the thread. So in this case, is bass fishing a sport? It is answered in the Quora one. Okay. But if I go down a little bit further and I look at this, um, mossy which is a pretty good site, right? We've all probably heard of that. If you're in the bass fishing world or the, the outdoorsy world, professional bass fishing is a weird sport. That's the title. So again, I'm saying Google is ranking this, even though the question is not in the title is bass fishing a sport. So that's a good sign. All right. Wikipedia. Um, here's another one, uh, boatinggeeks.com is fishing a sport or just a hobby. So they did answer it. Uh, let's see. Salt strong is, is fishing really a sport or just a hobby? Here's your proof. Uh, let's see. Outdoor, uh, troop.com is fishing considered a sport. Not exactly the same one or the exact match, but it's close. And then uh, mentalfloss.com, 15 things you might not know about competitive fishing. So we have one here, Quora, okay, and a Wikipedia. And we also notice that there's some of these that are not the exact match for this phrase. So that's all pointing to this is going to be one that we can probably rank for, okay, on a, on a new website. Okay. So let's go to another one. 
Uh, why is bass fishing so hard? All right. So that's another one. So we have uh, outdoorlife.com is the first one that comes up. The science of why bass are getting harder to catch. It's similar, but it's not exact, right? People also asked uh, or ask, is bass fishing getting harder? Are bass easy to catch? Why are the bass not biting? Why is bass fishing so popular? Ah, there's that one again, right? Um, so those are some great subheads that we could put in this article. So let's go down here a little bit further and let's look and see what we got. Okay, so this one here is tiltfishing.com. Not catching bass, question mark. 12 reasons why bass aren't biting. Okay, so not catching bass, question mark. Why is bass fishing so hard is the search. Let's, uh, let's go down a little bit further here. Uh, bass. Uh, resource.com topic. So whenever I see that, that's basically a forum. So I just can't catch bass general bass fishing forum. That's number two. Okay. So I'm going to click on it here real quick. So if you're watching this, you're going to see there it is. This is basically user generated content. This is an old school forum guys, old school forum. This is good. This means that Google is ranking this because it probably doesn't have anything close or anything that will um that will give a better resource than what it has right here okay so let's go down a little bit further bassmaster.com when bass won't bite okay so now that's a pretty high domain authority site not sure if you'd outrank that one but if a forum did there's a good chance that you could now there's some videos then the next one reddit cannot catch a bass for the life of me, have tons of lures, I've, and then it just goes to, you know, say whatever because it truncated it. Okay. So that's a Reddit thread. Let's go down a little bit further. Field and stream 25 bass fishing tips for catching a 10 pound largemouth. Again, not answering why is bass fishing so hard. Uh, let's see here. The next one is game and fishing mag, desperate measures, tips for catching bass on tough days. Uh, and then the last one here is post.gazette.com. Study reveals why some largemouth bass are harder to catch. So a lot of these are not answering the question, or at least they're not directly answering the question that we used as a search query. Why is bass fishing so hard? All right. And then we established a forum. We established, um, I'm sorry, identified Reddit. Um, so those are all signs pointing to this would probably be a piece of content we could rank for. Moving on to another one. All right. Here is uh, this search. What size swivel for bass fishing? Okay. What size swivel for bass fishing? The first one is uh British, let's see, British sea fishing.co.uk. All right. Now that one there looks like that could be uh some type of category page. So let me just go ahead and click on that and see where that takes me. Okay, no, so that was just basically highlighted inside of a subcategory of a post. That was titled, let's see, terminal tackle two forward slash swivels. All right. So that's a good sign, by the way, guys, because it does not, it's it's not in the title. What size swivel for bass fishing? What it did is it scraped the article and found a subtopic on that. Let's look at people also ask, what size swivel should I use for bass fishing? Should I use a swivel for bass fishing? What is a good swivel size? How big is a size for swivel? So let's go down a little bit. Fishing swivel size is explained. Okay. River search. So that one there looks like that is just a, looks like it's just a page that was created that says, uh, or the title is fishing swivel size is explained. That's it. Now the next one in line bass resource. And that is going to be a forum post again. Okay. I'm going to click into it. Sure enough. What kind of swivels do I need? That was uh, and that was back in 2012. Okay. 2012. So that's, again, that's a good sign that we're seeing forum posts there. Um, scrolling down a little bit further. We have another one here, bassfishinggurus.com fishing tackle swivels. That's it. Okay. Again, the question I asked was what size swivel for bass fishing. So that's a good sign that that's not answering the question. And it's not in the title. Uh, let's see bullbuster.net. That's a community. Whenever you see community, that means that it's probably going to be some type of forum. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and let's see. Yep. It is a community, basically a forum. 
Okay. So let me get out of there. Uh, go down a little bit fur further. It's outdoor pro shop, uh, choosing fishing swivels. So that's closer. Uh, and then let's see, uh, shopcarls.com. That's a blog, but it's a, it looks like it's uh, when you should be fishing with a barrel swivel and then, uh, fishing Chris 10 best, uh, 10 best fishing swivels. And then you see some images down to the bottom there, right? So we identified again, another forum. Okay. And nothing is really directly answering that one. Let's go on to another one. Can you use a catfish rod for bass fishing? Okay. So the, the first post that comes up is, uh, catfish edge, uh, dot com catfish rods, the ultimate guide to catfish rods. Okay. So that one there is being featured. That's the snippet. People also asked what type of rod should I use for bass fishing? Does it matter what fishing rod you use? What kind of rod do you use for largemouth bass? Are catfish stronger than bass, right? Go down to the next result. There it is again, that forum catfish on bass gear, fishing rods, reels, line, knots. Again, that's a forum post. I'm curious to see how old that one is. That was 2015. So that's pretty old. Then if I scroll down a little bit further, catfish1.com, I'm a little confused about catfish rods, rods, another forum. This is another forum. <laughs> it's crazy. All right. So that's another sign. Uh, bassmasters.com, which rod and reel do I need? Um, let's see, adventure.com, buying guides, the best catfish rods, catch every size of catfish, fishing find, uh, let's see, or no fishing refined. Yeah. Different fishing rod types and uses explained. And then Quora, can you surf uh, fish with catfish rod? Can you surf fish with catfish rod? That's a Quora. Again, the question I was asking is, can you use a catfish rod for bass fishing? So what I'm looking at is I'm finding forums, I'm finding Quora, I'm finding Reddit, and I'm also analyzing the titles that are being indexed in Google. All right. And that's how I'm, I'm deciding that these are easy to rank for keywords. All right. Let me do another one. Catching bass with live bluegill. All right. So how do, and so now the question on the above here on, of this video was how do you catch bass on live bluegill? Let's scroll down a little bit and we have catch and fillet.com. How do you use bluegill as live bait? Okay. So that one there is a website that does answer the question. Okay. But it answers it way down in, in the post. Um, the title of the post is how to use a bluegill as live bait, not even for bass. Um, or was it catfish? What did I do here? Catfish. So it's not even, um, for bass or it says catfish. No, it just says how to use bluegill as live bait. And then inside the post, this is why it's so important to write good subheads too, by the way, that if I, um, let's see here, how to use bluegill, uh, cut, uh, bait for catfish, right? So that's inside of that post again, showing me that there's nothing that's exact. All right. So if I scroll down a little bit, people also ask, how do you use live bluegill for bass? What live bait is best for bass? How do you rig live bluegill? Okay. And then we have a YouTube result. Then we have lure uh, luremefish.com bass fishing with live bluegill. And then we have bassresource.com the forum. Once again, um, live bluegill as bait question mark. And then a little bit further down, we have ultimate bass.com. And then that looks like that is a forum as well. Ultimate bass, another forum. Uh, let's see that was created, uh, 2009, 2009. All right. And that's it, right? So that's what you do. I've got one more that I, I, I queued a bunch of these up. Um, are ugly stick, uh, are ugly sticks good for bass fishing? That's a type of fishing rod, I guess. Uh, bass uh, resource. The very first uh, thread here is indexed and ranking page one, position number one for, again, a forum. All right. Go down a little bit further. The third result, Reddit. Are ugly sticks good? And let's see if I found any other ones. Oh yeah. And then Texas fishing forum, ugly sticks, GX two question, Texas fishing forum. That's another forum that's ranking. And I'm not seeing the exact title. Are ugly sticks good for bass fishing? 
right? If I look at, uh, let's see here, people also ask, are ugly sticks any good? What type of rod is best for bass fishing? Are ugly stick rod sensitive? Is the ugly stick GX2 a good rod? Again, those are what you would put in your article. So I just identified one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right there. Okay, right there. Now, let me give you one more example, and then I'm going to show you a tool that makes this even easier so I don't have to go and look and find these from scratch. Because what you would do is you would just do a search, see if, if you know you can identify what I just identified, and then you would then pick that. But you might have to go through 15, 20, maybe 30 different keywords before you find these, right? So wouldn't it be cool if there was a tool that would actually bring these all to the surface, and then you can sort by um, how easy they are to rank by if they are showing up and ranking for, uh, you know, posts that have Reddit or forums or Pinterest or any of that stuff. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you here in a minute, but let's look at this real quick. Check out this plant-based diet for picky eaters. So I'm using plant-based because I have a, uh, one of our students, um, that is in the plant-based market. So I figured I would do this for him and also to show as an example, and it's a very competitive space. Like this is very, very competitive. So if we looked at this plant-based diet for picky eaters, which would be a great question, right? And you can see a bunch of ads are already running. If I scroll down a little bit, we have uh, the first organic result is picky eaters guide to eating plant-based. Okay. And then I can look at people also ask, what is the best diet for picky eaters? How do you eat vegan if you're picky? How do you diet if you're a picky eater? Are eggs okay on plant-based diet? Some of those things, right? So if I scroll down, I'm going to look for, the first thing I'm going to look for is, is there anything that, yes, there it is. Is anything calling out to me that is a forum post or user-generated content? And there is, if you're looking at my screen, you can see I've identified a Reddit thread, picky eater need help transitioning to plant-based diet. Okay. Pinterest 230 go vegan picky eaters ideas. Okay. Now that one there might be harder to rank for, but the Reddit one shows me that there's potential there to rank. The other thing I'm going to look at is plant-based diet for picky eaters. Is that in the title, how to become vegan when you're a picky eater, eight easy steps, um, how to cook plant-based meals for, uh, omnivores, uh, grateful, uh, grazer. Uh, and then we have 31 vegan recipes for kids that are picky eater approved. So the word picky eaters in there, but it's not exact. So there's a potential that you could rank for this keyword. And it is definitely one that I would write if I was in this space. All right. So that's that one. Let's see this one plant-based diet without gallbladder. This is interesting. All right. Now I found this one using the tool, but I wanted to show you that if you had a keyword like this and you did this manually, you would type your keyword in Google search, and then you would look at the results. Healthline.com is number one. People also ask is below that. And then Reddit, post gallbladder removal, vegan diet, question mark. So again, that shows me that I probably should write this piece of content, okay? And I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit and see if there's any other ones. Yeah, there's Quora. Uh, I think in the ninth position, what is it like to adjust to a vegan diet after gallstone surgery? Okay. So again, there's two sites that I feel allow me to, to potentially rank on page one or plant-based diet without a gallbladder right now. Again, you might want to put something in there like, um, how to, um, how to eat plant-based diet without gallbladder. Maybe that's it. Or can you, um, let's see, can you follow plant-based diet without gallbladder, right? Or um, plant-based diet without ga gallbladder, um, five things you need to know, something like that, right? That's what I would do to create that piece of content, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to this cool, or the, this cool tool, this tool, <laughs> this cool tool that is going to help us um, with this process. And the name of the tool is called keyword chef. All right. So keyword chef. Now, before I go any further, if you did want to try this out for free, uh, you can at this time, depending on when you are watching this or listening to this, if you go to brandcreators.com forward slash chef, go there, you'll see, you can try it out. 
And yes, I am an affiliate for it. I've actually had Ben, the uh, creator and the developer and the owner of this tool, which has only been around about a year, by the way, and he's constantly adding improvements to it. And I'll show you some of the features here in a second. And I'm going to actually do a live uh, research uh, session on a keyword um, here shortly. But the cool thing about this is you can buy credits. You don't have to sign up technically for a subscription. You can basically just buy credits and then you use the credits every time that you want to uh, to you know analyze some keywords. Um, and I'll show you how this how this works. Uh, but once again, I would definitely check it out even for free and see if this thing can help you uh, find some of these keywords. Uh, again, go to brandcreators.com forward slash chef and uh, you can check it out. All right. So let's go ahead and let's go to this one here. All right. So this is catching bass. Now, let me go back if, if I kind of try to uh, explain, and I'm going to try to do this so you can you can understand it if you're watching me, but also if you're listening to this only. Basically, you have this little area that says discover. Search for broad topics like cooking or use wild cards like best for chefs. See more tips and it gives you some more tips. But basically, they have, a, they have all of these different, um, these different um, types of keywords. The wild card, what that does is it basically will add uh, different letters to the front of it and it will then fill in the blank. So kind of like if you went to Google and you typed in, can you catch bass A, B, C, D, and then what it'll do is it'll auto-populate. This, what this will do is it will do this for you. That's why he calls it the wild card. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. If we do questions, that's the one I usually do myself. That will give you all of the questions. We have best, so maybe best fishing lure or bass fishing, um, compare, we have that feature, how to, we have that feature, most, we have that, alternatives, and then we have ideas, okay? Um, like I said, I usually do uh, questions is where I usually go. Wild card, I also do that, and I'll show you what a wild card will look like. So I'm going to go ahead and put in catching bass, all right? So I put in catch, catching bass, I used it for the wild card, okay? And let me just show you this real quick. If you want to, uh, and I'll explain this, if you want to use the wild card, and let's just say I was doing it for plant-based, you'd have to put a little asterisk, and it'll tell you if you don't do it. You'll put a little asterisk there, uh, and then what you'll do in this little search box, you'll put in plant-based, right? And then I'll hit the little search topic, and then what it'll do is it says cooking up some keywords. This may take a minute. It'll give you a preview of what these are like. Now, if you don't like them and you don't want to run it, you don't have to and you don't pay for any credits. So it kind of gives you, uh, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And these here, the sample keywords are best plant-based milk. Um, is plant-based protein powder good for you? Plant-based diet versus keto versus uh, or for diabetes. Yummy plant-based nuggets, benefits of plant-based diet for the environment, plant-based meat with low sodium, plant-based diet with protein, um, quiche with plant-based milk. So you have all of these. Now I could do the exact match, so it'll go and find all of those, or I can do exact plus similar. Now it's telling me for exact match, I have 783 keywords that it will go out and find. Now, if I use the exact and similar, it has 842. Now, each one of those, I am going to use one of my credits, okay? So depending on how many credits you have, you could use up a 1,000 credits pretty quickly, okay? Um, so you want to be careful and you want to make sure that you are going to uh, use uh, the, you know, the credits um, to, to really support what you're trying to do so you don't just randomly just do it, right? So then I would just go and get keywords or I'd hit cancel. Now, if I didn't want to do wildcard, I'd go to questions and I would do plant-based diet, okay? And then put in the search and then it'll give me another thing. Now, the cool thing with this is we can ignore keywords with certain words. So it'll give you how many have eat in it, lose, use, eggs, protein, drink, foods, include, like whatever. All of these words, if I want to get rid of those and kind of um, narrow down my search, I can. Now, if you're not 
watching this, this might not make a lot of sense. That's why you probably want to go try it out for yourself. Again, go to brandcreators.com forward slash chef. Yes, that's an, an affiliate link that I will get a commission, um, but uh, you don't pay anything extra. Um, and you can go over there and try it for free. Um, so this one here, the sample keywords is do plant-based diets help with weight loss? Do you have to count calories on plant-based diet? Can you use honey on plant-based diet? Are plant-based diets becoming more popular? What is a whole food plant-based diet? And so on, right? So what I would do, there's 394 keywords that I'm going to be analyzing and it would be 394 credits, okay? And then I would hit get keywords. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because I've already kind of did this um, and I'll show you that here in a second. So that's kind of how it works, okay? But now once I run it, this here is in a wild card. You can see here, these are all the keywords. I have 210 keywords, okay? And again, if you're not watching this, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm scrolling and I'll, I'll explain what some of these features do. So if we're looking at this, the very first one, I want to explain this here. So um, let's look at this one. I think this one is really actually good. Catching bass with hot dogs. Okay. Now that keyword says the average search is zero. The high, uh, the high, it gives you a high and a low, like the high time of the year. So when it's trending, it might get higher. The low is the low time of the year. So it kind of gives you those numbers. This here is saying zeros. I don't buy it for a minute that no one has searched for catching bass with hot dogs. Number one, um, I am almost certain that people are searching for that because it's probably a thing. So what I'm doing here now though, is I'm looking at this right here and this is the SERP S E R P. And then basically that's just, uh, abbreviating for, you know, the search engines. Okay kind of like the positioning. So if I hover over this, it's showing a four. Okay. It's showing a number four in green. And then what it's doing is it will, it will highlight the ones that are either a forum post that are a Reddit thread or a user generated, uh, social media post. So you can see here the position number three, keeping a large mouth as a pet that's in a forum. Uh, the fourth one is having a largemouth bat at bass as a pet uh, is illegal, question mark. And then again, that's a forum post. Then the, the, the fifth one is, is uh, something else. It's, uh, let's see, the bass tank.com. And then six is, is it illegal to have some bass as pets? Um, that's another forum post. And then number seven is Quora. Can a bass live in a fish tank? All right. So that one there is catching bass for a tank. That's what that one was. Let's look at the hot dog one. Um, okay. The third position is uh, stripersonline.com forward slash surf talk forward slash topic. So it's a thread in a forum. Are hot dog pieces good bait for bluegill and bass? Um, the fourth one, the great hot dog experiment. Can you really get a bass to bite? That one is a forum post. The next one is hot dogs, question mark. Fishing Tackle Bass Fishing Forum. That's another one. And then the eighth one is Monster Bass Caught on Hot Dogs. That one's a Reddit thread. So there are four different opportunities there for you to rank. Would I create, if I was in this market and in this niche, would I create a thread on ca catching bass with hot dogs? I 100% would. Why wouldn't I? All right. Here's another one. Catching bass with gummy worms. Now that one there says it has three uh, different opportunities. And that one says it gets uh, average 10 searches per month. I, again, I don't believe that. I think it's a lot higher. Um, so let's go into this here. Uh, if you guys aren't watching, uh, if you're listening, all I'm doing is I'm hovering over the number three that is near the competition. So the very first one is gummy worms. Okay, fishing tackle bassing bass fishing forum. Bassresource.com, that is a forum. The third one, sour gummy worms, Texas fishing forum. There it is again. The fourth one, uh, anyone use gummy worms for bait? That's a fishing forum. And then I have Pinterest below that in the fifth position. Okay. Now, the other thing that he is working on, which I think is really awesome, is now you can see a word count alongside of an article. Okay. Now it's not going to give you a word count for forums because we don't really need that because it's usually low, but the one post here is only 470 words and it's in the position number six. 
And the name of that is frugal fishing tip. Use gumming worms as bait. And it's canadianfreestuff.com forward slash frugal fishing tip. This one here is a slam dunk. This one here is 100%. Like if I'm creating on bass fishing, I'm writing this post. Okay. I mean, it's so obvious and so easy. All right. So I can just keep scrolling. I can sort also if I wanted to use this for, let, let's say I did want to go after like, okay, some that are getting at least 10 searches a month. Right. If I went here, I'd have to scroll down a little bit. And then this one here, catching bass with bluegill. That one says it gets 30 in the, let's see, 30 average, 110 in the high, 10 in the low. And that one there has one opportunity. So it's saying live bluegill as bait. And there is a fishing forum that is ranking. Now, again, if I'm, if I'm hovering over that, it's also giving me a word count that I can look at. And this here right now is showing me that the top page, uh, actually the, not the featured, but the second uh, the second one, bass fishing with live bluegill is 760 words. Okay. And that is lure me fish.com bass fishing, live bluegill, 760 words. The second one is catch and fillet. How to use a bluegill as live bait, a thousand and eighty words. Then we have the forum. Then we go below that bass mass, uh, bassmaster.com understanding bass, uh, Forage uh, Sunfish, 1,540. Then the next one, Bassmaster.com Tips, uh, 630 words. And then, uh, let's see, uh, LiveOutdoors.com, that one there, 450 words. So when I'm able to look at how many words these have as well, it gives me another advantage to go, okay, if I create a piece of content that is better, longer, It also has a better title that's going to match it. It's fully optimized with images, with internal links, outbound links, maybe a YouTube video embedded. All of that stuff, I am going to rank for this stuff. So if you took this and then applied what we have taught in the past and also what we teach inside of our niche properties class and you optimize your post, I don't know how you can't rank. It's almost like an unfair advantage being able to see this stuff because we're not guessing, okay? Um, Let's go down a little bit further here. I like this one. This one I like a lot. Catching bass with live frogs. So I've talked about this before too. If you find a cluster of similar keywords that all you need to do is fill in the ending with something different. So what I mean here is catching bass with live frogs, catching bass with gummy worms, catching bass with live bluegill, catching bass with sunfish, catching bass with night crawlers, catching bass with minnows, catching bass with live worms. If you just wrote all of those posts, you're going to have a cluster, a cluster of content that is going to be independently ranking. That's going to be driving traffic by using just that right there. So a lot of times you wouldn't know this unless you did a search like this and unless you identified them, but I'm seeing right here, there's one, two, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. So catching bass in April, catching bass in March, catching bass frog lures, catching bass with spinner bait. So all of that stuff, even though some of these might not have the opportunity for, um, you know, seeing an, uh, a forum or a social media post, even if it wasn't, I would still group them with my cluster. So that's just a little side tip there. All right. So, I mean, catching bass in muddy water, catching bass in the rain, catching bass in cold weather, catching bass on beds, catching bass in hot weather, catching bass with bluegill. I mean, these, and again, you could add something to this, right? So um, tips for catching bass in hot weather, tips for catching bass on beds, tips for catching bass for shore or from shore, tips from or catching bass on a fly rod. I mean, this is so obvious to me. Okay. And I found this by running this little wild card search. Okay. So when people say that they can't find keywords, man, it's endless. There's, there's more than I can actually create at this point. Okay. Uh, now there's actually a site that I'm going to be building from scratch here and I'm using this exact strategy for doing that. It's my sixth site, by the way. Um, and this here is going to be very, very low competition and also very short content. I say short a thousand words is going to be our average. All right. So 
I'm, I'm using the same strategy for newer sites and some of my older sites. All right. So with that being said, let's move over to here. This one here was just a question based search that I did. And this one here, uh, let me look at this. I mean, look at this one. Can you use a carp rod for bass fishing? It technically says the average is zero, the high is zero and the low is zero. So basically it's saying, no, no one's ever searched for that. I don't buy it for a second. This one here has seven positions that are weak. Okay. And, uh, the reason why I know that is because I'm looking at this right here, right now, if you guys are listening, I'm just hovering over the, um, the SERP little tab. And it's telling me that there's seven opportunities here and all of these are forum threads. Okay. Um, if I go down a little bit here, this one are ugly sticks good for bass fishing. Technically it says it gets 10 searches a month. I don't buy it. It's going to get a lot more. I know this for a fact because I've done this. I've, I've created so many pieces of content that said they get zero searches in these and, um, they get, uh, 500,000, 1500 because it gets a variety of other searches, which also brings me to this one little feature here. I want to share with you guys. If you look at this here, I'm, I'm hovering over where it says P A A. Okay. So four P A A. So these are like associated. These are uh, keywords that are associated with this search. Okay. So people also asked. Okay. So what it's doing is this tool is finding the people also asked. So if you want to use this for your outline, it's there. When you see that there's more words there, like four, that's a good sign because that means that you can probably rank for more terms. So in this case, I hovered over our ugly sticks, good for bass fishing. People also asked is, um, is an ugly stick, a good fishing rod. What type of rod is best for bass? Are ugly stick rods sensitive Are ugly sticks strong. So those would be ones that I potentially would want to add in that article, but also that could help me get ranked for a variety of other terms. Um, so that's another thing that we're able to use here with the tool. So again, I would encourage you guys just to come in here and play with it. Uh, again, you can get some free searches. Uh, if you go over to, um, brandcreators.com forward slash chef, you can check it out. Um, again, the credits aren't that expensive. So, I mean, you might want to just throw a few bucks at it and, uh, and get a list of, uh, of some keywords that you can start to write content on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring it over to our, uh, live attendees. If we still have anyone on, I haven't even been looking. And if you guys have a keyword that you want me to use as a search, let me know. Um, let's see. So the first one in was Ty Linda. So Ty Linda, I'm going to use yours and you want me to look at explore side-by-side -side riding off road. Okay. So let me ask you, let me, let, let me ask you this. Um, side-by-side -side riding off-road. So you want me to just basically search for side-by-side -side riding off-road? Is that is that the term that you want me to put in there that we can get? Or do you want me to do like side-by-side -side, uh, off-road, something like that? What would be a good one there? Uh, it looks like Scotty. What's up, Scotty McRoberts? Plastic waste is also a good one. I love that topic, by the way. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that we are going to use uh, a good term. So let me do this while I'm waiting, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And if you guys are watching or listening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, uh, let's see here. I'm going to go to discover right here. I'm going to go for a wild card right now. And I'm going to basically put in, uh, let's see. So I'm just going to put in off boating or how about this off road ATV? Let's do that. I'm just going to see what the wild card is going to come back as a sample. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know what Ozark off road ATV adventure reviews, how to build an off road AT ATV trailer, Fox Valley off road ATV, Orlando off road ATV, best off road ATV trailer, logging off, uh, road ATV trailer. So it sounds like trailers, axles, things like that. Let's see, let's get off of that. I'm going to go in here into questions and I'm going to do off road, uh, ATV just to kind of start and see what happens for questions. 
And uh, let's see what comes back. Oh, it's too low. Maybe because I need to separate off road ATV. See what happens here for questions. And then while that's running, uh, can am off road ATV? What is the best off road ATV? That only had two results, which is kind of interesting. Let me go back over and see if. Hi, Linda got back to me. Best side by side for trail riding. Uh, UT or ATV, I think it's ATV riding for trails. Um, okay, let's do that. Let's do uh, ATV for trails. Okay. Let's see what comes up. Looks like there weren't many keywords for this. Let's see. Side by side ATV. Did we do that one yet? Let's see. Let's see what happens here. And maybe the other thing to go into is maybe like accessories or something around it. Or is there, you know, uh, maybe for a trailer, ATV trailer, we go into that or ATV tires or, uh, you know, something along the lines that we're going to drill in a little bit deeper. Okay. So here it is. Can am side-by-side -side, uh, ATV, where to buy side-by-side -side ATV? Does Honda make a side-by-side -side ATV? How tall is a side-by-side? -side? Yeah, I like, okay. So I like this 43 credits we're going to use. I'm going to go ahead and get the keywords. Okay. So here we are. It gives me some search traffic. Okay. Side-by-side uh, -side ATV four seater, side-by-side -side ATV Honda. What is a side-by-side -side ATV? Okay, so now what we want to do is you just go here, and if you guys can't see me and you're listening, I just click on Get All SERPs. I click on that. It's going to do the work behind the scenes. It says your SERPs are being processed once finished. View your report under My Reports to see the update. This can take a few minutes for large reports. Okay, I don't need to do that. I'm going to let it run, and then I'll just refresh it. And while I'm while I'm doing this, though, uh, because Scotty McRoberts is on list, I'll do one on plastic waste, too, here in a minute. Um, okay, so update. So now it's updated. It says click to refresh. And I'm going to do that. Okay, so here we go. I like this. So, okay, this now a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll just look for high numbers for traffic, right? That's what people are looking for. What I'm looking for is stuff like this right here. What side by side ATV has the most leg room? I mean, you know you know for a fact that is being searched for because there's people that are tall. There's people that are big. There's, you know, not just big and fat either. They're big. Maybe there's a muscle guy that's got, you know, he's a big guy, right? Maybe someone's six foot eight and, and they want to know that. We know that that's probably searched for. So look at this right here. Let's hover over top of here. And it's showing me that we have, let's see, it looks like we have a forum, which is icy or iceshanty.com. We have a Reddit. We have another Reddit. We have another forum. We have a tractorbynet.com forum. And then we have askinglot.com. So there's basically no reason why you shouldn't write that article, Ty Linda, and why it shouldn't rank. So my test to you would be write that article and then come back and report inside of BCA, I know that you're inside Brand Creators Academy, and report and let us know how did it go and how fast did you rank, okay? Um, now, it says here, it does give us the uh, the average words that are being, so this one here is the five most comfortable UTVs, leg room, seats, and noise. Um, that one there has 1,170 words. Now, the other one, best UTVs for big and tall people, our top recommendation has 3,630 words. So that's a little bit bigger. And then the very uh, top one is atvtemple.com. Uh, these are the side-by-sides with most legroom, ATV Temple, 2,480. I still would probably just shoot for 1,500 words and say, let's see what happens. Um, I know that you'll get one of those spots between five and 10, though. I mean, it's a given. Um, okay, here's here's another one. Can you put car seat inside by side ATV? It's another great one. Um, so the featured snippet is tips to keep your kids safe on the trail. So it's not even, uh, you know, the question. Uh, and then let's see here in the third position, 
uh, riding with small children. Uh, let's see, RZR forums, uh, dot net. Um, then the other one is keeping your long or your young loved ones safe in a Polaris Ranger. Again, it doesn't say, can you put a car seat in a side-by-side -side ATV? <clears throat> so that one there, 1,460 words. The, the number two position one is only 1,090 words. Um, and then uh, the fifth one here in this position is carseat.org threads. Again, forum, news, car seat in side-by-side. -side. Uh, and then they have a YouTube result in the sixth position. The seventh position, car seat in UTV. Uh, Pirate4x4.com threads. It's another forum. Uh, so again, there's another one we've identified and let's see. And then we have, what is the shortest side-by-side -side ATV? So that's another one. Here's, there's two, it looks like two, uh, different spots here. Again, another thread in a forum in the third position. The fifth position is everything, everything, what.com. What is the smallest UTV? Um, and let's see the word count. Uh, let's see eight small size UTVs. That's 1,490 words, 50 inch trail capable UTVs, 1,290 words. I still think you could get away with 1500 words on this one as well. Uh, and then, I mean, we can keep going here. Uh, let's see, uh, this one here, Can-Am side-by-side ATV reviews. How much does a side-by-side -side ATV weigh? I love that one, by the way. Um, and that one there has, um, Let's see here. The second position is outdoor troop. Uh, that one there answers the question pretty good, but then sir, let's see, what is that? Survival tech shop.com UTV weight. So 580 words. Uh, and it looks like there's one Pinterest post at the very bottom. So I would go after that one as well. So again, this is just Again, we just did this search very, very quickly, and we've identified at least four, maybe even five um, that you could go after. And there's a bunch of ideas here. So let me know, Tylinda, if that was helpful. And then I'll, I'll do one more. I know I said I was only going to do one, uh, but I'll do one more. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do the one from Scotty McRoberts, Plastic Waste. Let's go ahead and do that one uh, for Scotty. Uh, let's see. And again, guys, if you want to go in and try this, go to, let me actually put that up there real quick. If you want to check it out, let me go here and here and check it out. There it is. Brandcreators.com forward slash Shep. And, uh, you can check out this pretty cool tool that's getting better by the way, all the time he's adding, uh, the, the owner, Ben is adding new stuff. I mean, the word count thing was just added. Um, all right, let's do another one. Let's try the wild card. I'm going to do asterisk plastic waste, and it might be too broad, but let's take a look at it and see what it brings back. Uh, diesel from plastic waste in India, plastic waste by country, roads from plastic waste, plastic waste, paper, bin, and lid, how to reduce plastic waste, UK, what happens with plastic waste? Okay, so those are decent. Again, I like questions. I'm going to go after questions, and I'm just going to put in plastic waste, okay? And let's see what comes up. And we'll see if we'll run the report, right? Uh, so 304 uh, opportunities came up. So of keywords, how much plastic waste do we put to the ocean and or oceans annually paper and plastic waste waste share, which of the following characteristics can plastic waste be, uh, incinerated safely in plastic waste by bio biodegradable. What are the types of plastic waste? How much plastic waste does Australia produce? What is plastic waste management? Uh, so these are all good. Um, so now I could also get rid of some of these. If I want to say India, get rid of India. Um, let's see if I wanted to get rid of China, maybe, um, in 12 China is actually part of it. So maybe burn recyclable effect. Uh, let's see, reduce ocean export causes school, prevent burnt management statement ways. Yeah, we'll leave all them. I'm going to go ahead and get the keywords and we'll then run ahead or we'll run this report. So here comes, here comes a whole bunch. And then I'm going to have to run the SERPs again to kind of see the opportunity. But if I didn't, and I just wanted to see this, what happens to plastic waste? Where does the majority of plastic waste end up? Um, 
how much plastic waste is produced each year. So let's get the SERPs. And then I'm going to go ahead and bounce back over and see if we have any questions while I'm waiting for that. And we can answer those. I know this is a little bit of a longer episode, guys, but let's see. All right. Uh, okay, cool. This is a good question. So Ty Linda wanted to know, why do you go after the ones with zero search instead of the ones that show high search because the competition is higher? Um, yes. Well, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't go after them. But what we're looking for is the opportunity score by having, uh, by having, uh, those forum posts, those, uh, Reddit posts. And if it makes sense, why wouldn't you, you know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't you go for that? We know that those questions are being asked. And even though it says zero, it's not zero. I can almost guarantee it's not zero. I'll show you here in a second on the screen. Why, um, why I do that. Okay. Um, all right, let's go ahead and check in with uh, the keyword chef and see if he's done whipping it up for us. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and click on update and here we go. Okay, so again, we're looking at this, right? And then what most people focus on is this. They go, okay, we don't have any searches here. Now this one here, where does the majority of plastic waste end up? This gets a thousand, 36 was in the high, 140 in the low, average is a thousand. So the reason why um, I would, again, look at this one here is, is it has a one next to it, right? So there's a one in the opportunity score. So if I hover over that, uh, where is it again here? Right there. I got to scroll down just a little bit so I can read it. There it is. So when I'm looking at this here, I'm looking at where is their opportunity? Right. So in this one, there's only one spot. Okay. That looks like it's a really easy to outrank website and that it's brainly.in. It's a forum. It's a question post. It's a thread. So this would tell me that I can most likely outrank that. Now that doesn't mean that I can't outrank some of those other ones. It doesn't mean that. All I'm saying is if we're looking purely at opportunity from forums, Reddit, uh, different answer type style, uh, like Quora, any of those, a Pinterest post, any of that stuff. And it doesn't have one in there and it has traffic. I might want to stay away from that one for right now. Um, unless I want to look in here and go, okay, I think I could probably beat that because there's not a lot of titles that are matching. Maybe then I can look at word count. I could go, oh, maybe the word count is something I want to, I want to look as, uh, something that I can improve. So in this case, if we look at this for uh, for this keyword, where does the majority of plastic waste end up? That was answered inside of brainly.in and it's question. It's a question uh, type style post. Okay, it's a it's a thread, right? Now, if I look at the at the featured, okay, it's where does the majority of plastic waste end up? And then it says oceans, and then it, it is a question again, and it's only 140 words. So. There's a chance that you could rank still, even if we didn't have this brain, brainly.in thing, right? The number two position, a whopping 91% of plastic isn't recycled. National Geographic, that's 1,010 words. Again, National Ge Geographic, it's a very high domain authority, and it might be hard to outrank that. Not impossible. Um, then we're looking at another one here. How does plastic end up in the ocean? 480 words. So this one here, I would... Number one, I would write it because I see that the number five position is a question-based post out of a forum. And then I'm also looking at some of the sites that are beating us. They're beating us with very little content. There's not a lot of substance there. But to answer your question, Ty Linda, I'm looking at this right here, okay? That right there, that five or the four or the three or even the two, those are showing me so this one right here, can I paint plastic waste pipes? That one there wouldn't be one that you would do just because it's not really um, plastic waste. It's a waste pipe. It's not what um, Scotty McRoberts, what he's doing is he's talking about uh, plastic waste in the ocean and how can we, um, you know, how can we do a better job with recycling our plastic and things like that. So like here, can you bend plastic pipe? Can you paint plastic? That doesn't, okay. When plastic waste is burnt, 
a complex weave, so I don't know. Explain how the 4R principle can help in managing plastic waste. Now that one is. Even though it's zero, I'm looking over here and I see that there's two positions, again, by that brainly.in, those are forum posts, right? So that's what I'm looking at. Um, if I go back to uh, the example, uh, where was it? Even if I go back to catching bass, let's say, right? So you can see these all have search traffic, but it's not showing me that I have the opportunity, even though if I want to hover over here and say best lures for catching bass, right? I can hover over top of here and I can look at just the word count and go, okay, is the word count enough for me to say that I think I could outrank these? I mean, the top one is 1160 words. The second one is 900 words. The third one's 1280 words. The fourth one is 306 or 3,600 words and so on, right? The average is 1,850 words, but it's not showing me that there's any forum posts, any Reddit posts. So I'm only trying to zone in on those. So like this right here, right? It gets 10 searches technically, and it's Ken uh, or catching bass with live frogs, right? I'm looking at that. There's three spaces on the front page that fall into this criteria for being able to rank on page one. So hopefully that answered your question. Do not discount the tens, the, the, even the zeros, right? Like don't like this here, catching bass with goldfish. You know that that question has been asked catching a bass on a jitterbug. We know that that's been asked. Um, and it's got three different opportunities there that we could potentially, uh, get on page one. All right. So guys, we got to wrap this up. This has been a long, long podcast, a long session. Hopefully it's been helpful. Uh, and, uh, what I'll do is I will come back and see if there's any questions that I need to answer later, but, uh, definitely check it out guys. Uh, again, brandcreators.com forward slash chef. I really, really think that, uh, this will give you some low hanging fruit keywords. If you are just starting, or if you want to get a little bit of traction, you want to start ranking because it's so important in the very beginning, as we're building out our website to really build relevancy. And relevancy, that's why I say, even if you're going after a keyword that says it gets zero searches, I guarantee it's going to get searches. Um, it always does, whether it's off of that one phrase or a different phrase that led someone there because it picked it up inside of your subheads, whatever. But what that does for your site is it gives Google the relevancy of what your site is about. It allows them to scrape your site and start indexing it with content that is related to your niche. Okay. And going back to Ty Linda's, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever the two seater question was and how, uh, how much room or whatever is in a two seater for a tall person, whatever, like, you know, that people are searching for that keyword. Does your market need that? Yes. Would I create it? Absolutely. Because it shows me that I can probably rank very, very easily. All right. So that is pretty much going to wrap up this long podcast, this long coffee talk. But again, if you have any questions on this, drop them in the comments. If you're listening to this in the podcast, another reason why you probably want to come on over and hang out with us, takeactioncrew.com. Um, but again, I'd give this a try. Brandcreators.com forward slash chef. Give it a try. Yes, I'm an affiliate for it. Yes, you'll buy me a cup of coffee or you can just use the free version, uh, which I believe gives you some searches. It just doesn't give you the opportunity score and some of the word count stuff and some of those premium features. So check it out. Uh, hopefully this helped you. I'll keep you guys posted and uh, yeah, get out there and uh, create some content, get ranking and build those niche properties. All right, guys. So take care, take action, have an awesome day. And I'll hear, I'll see you in the next episode. Take care guys.